Well, we're back with our study of the Augsburg Confession. Yes, we've changed the format a bit. Tired of looking at my ugly face, we're now going to look uh, at the text itself together and study it. Well, they, had, they took a Polaroid back when the Augsburg Confession was presented. Here's Emperor Charles V, uh, 1530, at the Diet of Augsburg, as the reformers there present to him the, the true teaching of the church that they have not strayed in a single article of doctrine uh, from the Catholic Church. Here is another one of the emperor receiving it as, look at that, the church is busy doing uh, what the church does, and that is receiving Christ's gifts, the word of baptism and washing there, the preaching of the word, and then, of course, the Lord's Supper, the Supper of the Lord. Well, that's what we're looking at today, Article 10 of the Lord's Supper. What does it say? Of the Supper of the Lord, they teach that the body and blood of Christ are truly present and are distributed to those who eat the Supper of the Lord, and they reject those that teach otherwise. Yes, this is the Supper of the Lord. This is His. He instituted it, and He did it for Christians, that we might be able to partake and join Him he did that on the night when he was betrayed, when he took bread and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. Drink, it of it all, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant. This is the New Testament, he said, this meal, this gift, the covenant and promise that he is, has made with all humanity. There he is, you can even see here in this image, there's blood trickling out of Christ into the cup for the Christians to eat and drink. And this reminds us of the garden. You remember the garden? And there were two trees there in the garden. And those trees, they, their roots went down into the same soil. There was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then there was the tree of life. And they were there in the midst of the garden. And of course, God said, well, you can't eat the fruit, Adam, on this tree. It will bring death. If you eat that fruit, you will die. Uh, but please, don't eat this fruit, but eat this fruit as much as you can. This is the fruit of life. And so, we know what happened, unfortunately. That uh, Adam, well, he went for the evil and the knowledge instead of the life. And ever since that day, we have been uh, dealing with the consequences of sin. But these two trees have been made one tree in the cross of Jesus. We've been taken back to the garden, the death tree. He has taken in his humanity. Surely, Adam, on the day you eat of it, you will die. And yet he has brought that tree to be life now for us. The life of God, the life of Christ himself poured into the cup for the Christians to eat and to drink. We need to eat that fruit on that tree of life. It's real fruit, just as it was real fruit that brought death. Now it's real fruit that we eat uh, to have life. Well, you can imagine this probably could have been confusing. Extraordinary, mysterious to the Christians. And so Paul talks about it too in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He asks rhetorical questions. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? Of course it is. It's an actual, real participation in the blood of Christ. The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Of course it is, he's saying. And this is a great mystery, that God, in order to forgive our sins has come down into our humanity and made himself the fruit that could hang from the tree, made his own body and blood uh, the fruit that would hang and that we would receive for forgiveness. This is what he's working out. For wherever there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. Now, Paul wrote some other things because we could think, oh my goodness, I, I should never attain to such a lofty and wonderful thing. Who can have it? Who could possibly be given to eat this? Well, he said, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner uh, will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Well, if the body and blood aren't there, how could you be guilty 
against them. It's, well, it's because they are there. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. The judgment of the tree, that tree of knowledge, that same judgment remains on them. But when we discern the body, that is when f with faith we are given to trust and, and believe that this is actually the body and blood of Christ, the new fruit of life hanging on the tree of life for us Christians. Well, we receive all the gifts that were intended there, forgiveness, life and salvation, the entire New Testament. What an incredible mystery. This is the culmination, the peak, the top of all he came to accomplish. This New Testament for you and me, a meal for faith, of faith, and to faith in the Lord Jesus. May you and I always trust in his great gifts for all 